Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. We do have our last round of big parts that have showed up for my Trans Am behind me. Uh, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that it's got a stock, the, the older style LS1 stuff in it, uh, LS1 intake manifold with EGR that's been deleted, and it has a set of 853 cylinder heads. Um, I do have an LS6 intake for it, and I do have a set of cylinder heads that should be showing up anytime now. I got them from one of the subscribers, which is super crazy. We actually ended up talking to each other on a Facebook group, uh, totally coincidentally. I recognize his name, so we got to talking, and I got a set of cylinder heads from him. So thank you, Mr. Bledsoe, for that. It's awesome. Super excited for those. They should be here today. Otherwise, I've got a little bit of new camera gear. Um, when we get in the car, you'll see I've got a new camera set up in there for talking to you nice people while I'm driving the vehicle. And uh, I'd actually bought it for another video that's coming out where I'm gonna be reviewing my friend Kirk's Turbo Mustang. So I'm really looking forward to that. But before we go over what I got as far as cylinder heads go, we're gonna take the car to a local car show. Uh, this one is over in Eveleth, Minnesota. It's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, it's going on for a couple hours, and after that, they do a big cruise up and down the main drag in the city. It's kind of, kind of old timey, kind of interesting. It's, it's really fun though. And, uh, some of the cities around here still do that, and people really turn out for this stuff. So, so we'll get the car started, go for a little ride, and I'll see you guys in the car. What's up? We got my older Sony A5000 on a uh, windshield type mount. camera than a GoPro. Might be a little bit dark. I'll have to figure out how to get the sun on the right side of me when I'm driving. So this is my first time ever using it, so be gentle. It's a little bit of a test more than anything to see how shaky it is. See if the wind noise is bad. I've got a couple of wind muffs on the camera, but uh, you never know. Probably find some pretty smooth roads for this to work. They're kind of rough till we get down to our main street here. And obviously, we got to do a little sound test here. Sounds better than a GoPro, I bet. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Does it sound okay? himself oh baby all right so we're gonna crack in one of these boxes here real quick um not i didn't mean to like snake you guys this is actually just the box that the dude had to ship these in um obviously obviously this would be a nice type of cylinder head to get uh the prc stuff is super good uh the guy that i bought it from is a subscriber on the channel so so big thank you to Travis. He got this stuff boxed up super nice and shipped out really quick. So there you go, we got a set of 243 cylinder heads as you can see there. Whether you know or not, these are actually a very similar casting to the other popular cylinder heads for a for an NA combination that needs to flow really well. Like this one with the Brian Tooley Racing Stage 4 cam, it can use all the airflow in the high RPM, in high RPMs that it can get. After doing a little bit of research, the 243s are a really good option for me. 
They're the same casting as the 799 cylinder heads, but the, I believe the 799's castings are just a little bit worse than the 243, so they could be cleaned up a little bit, but physically they're the same. So if someone uh, has anything to comment on that, drop a comment down below. I think that's the only difference between the 243's and the 799's, so uh, anyways, I'm sure I'll be flogged or flayed alive if I'm incorrect on some part of that. But anyways, it's another cylinder head in this one. This will really round out that LS6 intake manifold that I bought for it a while ago really well. So anyways, so this is a set of 853 cylinder heads. They're some of the least desirable cylinder heads to have on this LS1 engine. It should really bring the combo over the 400 wheel horsepower mark, which I'm, I'm really hoping it's going to do. So Hopefully it's going to work out for it here. Uh, we'll see. Anyways, this stuff's going to be shelved pretty much till the end of the season because I don't want to take it apart before the end of the year. I really don't want to miss anything with it. Like the last couple of weeks, I haven't uploaded much since Power Cruise, but I've gone to a whole bunch of car shows and I've driven the car a lot. I even took a couple of fun rollers on our way down to Duluth to uh, my friend Jake's Machines and Caffeine car show. So here's a couple of rollers from that. The WS6 in this is actually the owner that used to own the black WS6, or it's actually uh, that nighttime blue metallic, that real dark blue. Uh, Jared, he actually used to own this car behind me here. He's actually who I bought this from, so he's had two or three of them since then, but he's got that NBM Trans Am WS6 that's in the video. Um, he beats on it pretty good. It sounds awesome. Makes over 400 wheel horsepower. So big shout out to Jared. That's a super cool car and uh, sounds awesome. Another note, I have a little GoPro clip earlier of that video of him doing a burnout. Uh, he's got the Speed Engineering True Dual kit on it. And people ask all the time on Facebook, should I buy it? How does it sound? If you hear it in person, you're, you're not going to believe how loud it is. Like even at idle, it's it's super loud. And when he gets on it, there's nothing louder. It almost sounds like open headers. It's, it's really crazy. talking with him the other day there's also no room to add any mufflers because of how the exhaust is ran so it's a good looking kit the price is good but buyer beware it's gonna be loud you know um, my car is pretty loud but his is five times louder there's a couple of rollers of guys that came with uh, a few days ago I actually shot the, the first ever review and sort of a feature video of Kirk's turbocharged two valve Mustang uh, we did a little bit of work on it here actually during the course of the day, we blew off some intercooler piping. We got to put back together with some hairspray and it was good the rest of the day. And for the next few days, actually, we ran into him a couple days later on that cruise. And we also changed the brake calipers. So here's a little bit of footage from that day. Well, so far, we've been out driving Kirk's Mustang pretty much all morning into the afternoon. Now, it took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna. We even managed to blow off one of his intercooler pipes down there. So, little trick you guys might wanna know. You need a little bit of hairspray. And luckily, my girlfriend just so happened to have some, so thanks, Hannah, for all that. Use a little bit of hairspray and spray on the piping. It helps to slip the coupler on, and then it actually dries and gets a little bit stickier. It's kind of a nice trick to use. But otherwise, the car's been running really good. The only other thing we noticed is that the passenger side brake caliper actually seems to be sticking a little bit, which is unfortunate. We could smell it stopping the last couple of stops on the way to the house here to tighten that thing up. But... Other than that, car's running super good, and um, yeah, I think we're going to go finish filming this, or maybe not. We'll see what happens with the brake here, if we can free it up. But we got a pretty cool video coming. Should be good. Are we good to go? We'll see. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I, I guess I... So it'll bop, pop off of the bottom side now. Yeah, that's what I worry about, I guess. But for beating on it like we have, it's been performing really, really good, so you can't really ask for much more kind of thought we blew a spark plug out or something like that and luckily that's not what it was it was running pig rich for a while and we did a couple flyby videos he was saying that it kind of fell on its face a little bit and like it didn't make power and it went this air fuel ratio was showing nine afr so it was super rich and luckily that's all that's wrong with it so we'll see what happens yeah <laughs> That's crazy. I haven't had a break do that ever. Little update. 
This caliper, the boots on both of the pistons are pretty tore up, so I'm wondering if the piston locked up or what it was, but as soon as the car started, you couldn't even move the, the wheel at all. And I can't get these brought in at all. So we ended up going to the parts store. AutoZone had a new caliper. So I'll throw that on, bleed it, and I think it should be good to go after that. And that'll put together. So we'll be good to go here pretty quick. This stuff doesn't take long, luckily. Luckily they had one too. So, I'll toss the caliper on. It came with hardware, crush washers and everything. We're pretty much good to go here. All right, you ready? Yep. Yeah, all right, pump it up. There you go, brake right. calipers working good. Didn't feel this. What do you think? And I'm home in one piece to see the family. Oh Jesus, can you shake? Can shake. What a good boy. Can you lay down? Jeez, he's good. She go free. What about that little one? Yeah, Kirk was super cool. He actually reached out and offered to do a review that to do a review on his car, and I really can't thank him enough. It opened a whole bunch of doors for me, and some people have actually reached out. Oh, some other super cool cars too that want to do feature and review type things. So if you're interested in that sort of thing and you're in the Minnesota or Wisconsin area, I just started up an Instagram page again so you can send me a DM on there. Uh, it's linked in my about information on the channel. So if you want to check that out, or you can send me an email to greennightproducers at gmail.com. We can figure something out. I'd really like to do it. Um, if you're comfortable being on camera, I'd love to do a feature. Uh, if you're not, I'll happily drive the car. I'm not going to beat on it. So you can do all that. Uh, we'll make it look like I'm doing it, but... I'm not going to be it on anybody's car, so really just like, uh, I like the process and filming and making the video and stuff, so if you're into that sort of thing, hit me up, I'm looking to do it, I could dip it in quite a few, if you're in the Iron Range or Duluth Superior area before the end of the year, they take a few hours, so give me a shout. Brings us into the next portion of the video, which has been kind of all over the place, like the last few videos that I made, I didn't really know what they were going to be until I got done making them, so sorry, but this one's a little bit all over the place too. Uh, today, while I'm filming this, is Tuesday, and Wednesday, being tomorrow while I'm filming this video, uh, I'm actually going to go to Brainerd for a Wednesday night drag. So what I got to do, I got to back the car up a little bit, and I'm going to change the oil real quick. And uh, yeah, give it a quick once-over, make sure it's good to go. And I think I'm going to meet another subscriber at the track tomorrow. I think it's the Racing Mafia vids. That's coming right off my memory, so if I butchered it, uh, sorry about that. I'll put a little link below to the channel. Check his car out. It's super cool. I'm sure it's going to eat this thing if we race him at the track together, which I think we're going to. So looking forward to meeting him and uh, checking out another car. So we'll get the car started, back it up, and get this oil change done real quick. And we'll be pretty much ready to go tomorrow. The car's running good, so there's not much else to say about it. There's a little bit of a parts update. I guess uh, we'll get into little, this little bit of maintenance. I said I wasn't going to film any more oil changes, but here we are, and uh, we'll see you guys with the car up in the air. You guys remember a while ago where I said I wasn't going to film oil changes anymore? It was a long time ago. And uh, here we are, doing what I said I wasn't going to. A lot of things in life like that. Usually they're more fun. Like, I'll just have one more. 
you know, things like that. Wow, that's nice. That oil's probably got a thousand miles on it if I had to guess. Maybe a touch more, but not much. So, we'll get the filter off and finish this up, finish out today's no. video. If that's any indication of how well the oil filter came off, I came real close to failing with that one. Jesus, that hasn't happened in a long time. So I know a lot of the guys that watch this are DIYers too, and a lot of them are actually young kids, which I didn't realize until I talked to a couple of subscribers. I've got kids that watch this stuff, so just saw me fill up the oil filter there. I like to do it on my cars because when the engine starts, it doesn't have to force oil through the filter element, and uh, yeah, just off to a better start when you've drained it of oil. Um, it's my personal preference. I don't think you need to, but I feel better about doing it. And I'll put a little skim of oil. You can see it's shiny there on the gasket so when you screw on the oil filter to the oil pan or the block or whatever fitting or boss that actually goes on on your vehicle it's got a nice smooth smooth contact area so when you get into the car just wipe off where the old mating surface was really good and you'll be able to thread that one on give it a nice get it nice and tight by hand and then maybe another half to maybe another three quarters of a turn and you should be good to go so like i said 99 percent of people know that but there is some people that are new to the car hobby so this is just a little bit of a uh, just a tip for them if you know, you already know, and if you don't, now you know. So I'm going to get back into the car for a little bit more punishment, and that'll about wrap up the oil change here. I think it's done draining. First step is to realize that it all begins with you and me. Here. Sure we got oil pressure. That's gonna about do it for today's video. It was a little bit confusing, there's a whole bunch of stuff from the last week or two, but I did get this all changed on the Trans Am and filmed it, which I said I was never gonna do again. We'll see you guys in the next video. We'll be going to Brainerd International Raceway again for the last Wednesday night drags of the year. Do a little bit of racing, and hopefully 10 Bolt makes it there and back like it has a couple times for me. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today's video. Hope you guys liked it. Subscribe for some more content and review videos and stuff like that. We've got a couple more coming down the pipe. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to be down in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area at the Minnesota Car Enthusiasts Club Light Up the Night Car Show at the Alliance Soccer Field. Should be a pretty cool venue, uh, cool show. It's a little bit different having a car show at night, so I'm looking forward to that. Other than that, I'm going to be filming another car. It's a Terminator Cobra this time. It's about 750 horsepower and it's rowdy, so looking forward to that one. It's going to be a feature video. It's going to be down in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, so if you'd like to do something like that, Again, send me an email, send me a, send me a DM on Instagram or whatever, and we'll get in touch and probably make it happen. So yeah, until that edit comes out, which I'm, look, which I'm really looking forward to, my buddy Ron and I are going to go down and film it. And um, uh, and yeah, hopefully it turns out as good as the Turbo Mustang review did with Kirk in his car. So, hope you guys liked that video. If you haven't checked it out, go back to my last upload. It's the Turbo 2-Valve Mustang video, and check it out. Drop a comment down below if you want to see more of that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, that'll about do for today's video. We'll see you guys next time.